Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Um, back with another SolidWorks uh, tutorial. Been a while. Um, I haven't really been um, uh, doing much personal stuff recently. Just been busy with work. So, um, what I'm going to cover today is uh, something I tried uh, figuring out in SolidWorks, um, which is um, basically controlling the pitch of a pattern using a graph and uh, this was my attempt at emulating a function that's actually is built in natively into ProE slash wildfire slash creo um, that I used on a on a couple of chair designs like a decade ago um, so it's it's the graph evaluation feature and in, in pro engineer so basically you can draw a a spline or a, a series of arcs and lines and it will evaluate um along that point and you can you can you can um space points along a along a spline based upon the curvature of the um of the graph so it's a really useful function solidworks doesn't have anything like that built in as far as i know um so i've sort of um got a way you can do this something similar in a sketch form um it's it's a little bit more cumbersome but at least you've got an option to do something like that so i'm just going to create like a um sort of speaker pattern or something else um on this little test plaque model this is um this is a version of an old model of mine which was the um an old tutorial which was making a pillow surface planar inside, um, G3 corners and G3 blends onto the planar, you don't need the new, um, what's it called, torsion constraint, um, because I'm matching splines to a, um, matching splines to a line, so you just line up all the points basically in the style spline, you have one, two, three, four points in a row and it gives you the G3 connection there. Um, so I'm just using this as a, as a, uh, base model. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a sketch. To, um, like the boundary of the speaker, sort of, uh, of the pattern I'm going to create. Sorry if my voice is a bit rough. Um, uh, it was my birthday yesterday, and today I'm feeling quite a lot older. I think I'm coming down on something. Anyway, I'll just keep this pattern with, on on the planar surface. Um, make things a bit easier. Okay, and on that same plane, so I've created a boundary for the pattern, now I'm going to create a control sketch um, which controls the pitch of my pattern, so, So just a couple of uh, instruction lines and then I'm going to create a style spline um, and to start with the degree three. Right, so with this spline there's this handy function up in tools, sketch tools, segment. So you can select a line or an arc or a spline and you can specify a number of points um, to go on that um, the selected entity and basically they've got an equal length relationship so if I move the spline around make it bigger those points um, distance will update you can also right click on those points and edit segment points for this pattern maybe uh, 
a few city points. Okay, and as you can see, they update. So to create a variable pattern, basically I want to do is, is get these points and then project them down onto a line. So that will give me a uh, variable spacing based upon curvature and the steepness of the spline in relation to, to the line they're getting projected down onto. So to speed things up, just bring this down here. I'm going to turn my, excuse me, sketch relations off. Um, visibility on those just so I can see a bit clearer. Um, so now I'm just going to drag down some construction lines onto my boundary. So just going to check this all works. Okay, so you can see there uh, the steeper the spline is the tighter the, um, the pitch of the um, projected points. Okay, um, let me see. So I might just throw a center line in here. Make it vertical and then make these two CVs symmetric for that. Okay, let's leave that where it is for now. It's going to save this. The next step will be to, on that same plane, which is pillow height, a sketch. Now I need to create a point um, on each of these ends of these construction lines where they hit my um, my perimeter boundary for the um, pattern. Because I'm going to use a sketch pattern. Maybe I should have used less points. Yeah. Okay, sketch pattern's done. And then um, I'm going to create a circular cut. Corner here. Action 0.5 maybe. We'll go with 0.5 for now. Okay. Um, Inset cut extrude half a millimeter. Okay, so I'll turn my sketch off. So there's my seed feature. And now I'm going to use the points here in sketch pattern. So insert pattern mirror, sketch driven pattern. Selections going to select those points in that sketch. And feature, we'll just pick the cut extrude, geometry pattern. Centroid. And OK. Right, so you can see there we've got some variable pitch in that pattern. Um, I'll just pattern this down again. We'll just go curve driven pattern. I'll pick one of those um, lines in the boundary and then pick the sketch pattern. Maybe th yeah, 30. Okay, so there's my variable pattern. Um, now there's things you can do. You can go back into that sketch, which controls everything. Um, so the pitch here is tighter towards the outside, what if you wanted to make it accelerate towards the middle? Let's have a look. Okay, so you can see there, I've crossed the CV polygons over, it doesn't really matter. Um, with the net effect that the pitch um, is getting tighter towards the middle. Now let's have a look what that looks like. Okay, so there you can see the pattern is tighter in the middle now. Um, things you can try messing around with. 
are adding um, extra CVs to your pattern for your um, spline so you can change the curvature uh, in different ways. We'll see what this does. Okay, maybe a bit too tightly bunched in the middle there. Uh, let's try something. And again, if I turn my sketch relations on and I'll delete the symmetric straight there, and I'll turn the sketch relations off again. Um, so try something, some asymmetry. Okay, so there you can see the pattern's really, the pitch is really getting pretty dense down this end. Um, excuse me. One thing I uh, was also messing around with earlier was like this symmetric again. Oh, it won't. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, let's just this kind of thing going on. I'll just rebuild this. Okay, um, you can mirror that sketch pattern along a diagonal. Um, so you can, or you could have a separate pattern, a separate spline pattern controlling the pitch in this direction as well, in your Z direction. So I'm going to quickly, um, just, just to illustrate that, I'm going to mirror the sketch pattern uh, in the Z direction and use that to drive the pattern in that direction as well. So if I delete that pattern. Okay, so I'm going to go onto the pillow height plane. I'm going to create a series of lines here through those points. I can't convert entities. The, uh, Convert the entities from the sketch pattern point sketch. I'll just have to create a series of lines here. And I'll mirror these lines um, across 45 degrees. Uh, convert entities on that line there. For construction, mirror entities. Select entities to mirror, mirror about that line there. Okay. And now I have to go and put um, add another sketch and just recreate sketch pattern in the Z direction. I'll go as quickly as I can. Go okay. So now I have my second sketch pattern which someone's undefined in there. Okay, that's all defined. Now I should be able to insert mirror edge driven pattern. I'm going to select that second direction here. Features, gonna pick our first pattern. Okay, see this is all out on the out of uh, alignment. That's because we've got centroid, so we'll go selected point. I'm gonna pick this point here. And geometry pattern. So you can see there in the preview, it's mirrored over. Um on the 45 degrees, the pattern looks like it's lined up pretty well. So I'll accept that. Right. So there you can see the pattern has rebuilt. Um, so I'm controlling it in both directions using the one sketch there. Shade it. And turn now. edges off. So I mean, this is just a, um, a brief, um, a brief um, video covering what you could do, you know, using a, a um, series of lines or a single spline 
and dividing that equally using the segment tool, sketch in, sketch tools segment, um, and then projecting those down onto a onto a line to give you a variable spacing. Um, I hope to do another video to illustrate using something like this in 3D space. Um, probably a bit more involved and much more like the old pattern that I created on the um, on the null generation chair um, using the eval graph tool in, in um, Pro Engineer Wildfire for time. Um, yep, so I hope, I hope you guys found this useful. Uh, I might stick this file online, so have a look in the description. Um, there's nobody's IP in here apart from mine, so no toes to be stepped on. Um, hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Thanks very much. AJ Design Studio, Andrew Jackson. Bye.